Hi, welcome to this tutorial on factorising quadratic expressions or some people call these trinomials. Now I'm going to look at these special ones where we have got a number other than a 1 in front of the x squared. Okay, And I've picked four examples, all different in the way of their signs. We've got a, an example here with two pluses two minuses here, plus and a minus, and a minus and a plus, so that I cover all possibilities. So how do we factorise any of these quadratic expressions? Well, what we'll do is we'll take away those two there, and we'll start with this first one. Now, what you can do is I've, I've written these in red and green, as you'll see in a moment why, okay? I've colour-coded these just to help the explanation. What you've got to do is to think of two numbers, let's illustrate them with uh, a question mark, two numbers that multiply together that give you the result of 2 times plus 15. 2 times 15. And what does that come to? Well, it comes to, obviously, 30. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give 30. And we also need to think of these two numbers must add together to give this green number, the number in front of the x. In this case, 13. So we're looking for 13. So what could those two numbers added together be that make 13 and multiply together to be 30? Could it be, say, 6 and 5? Well, no, because 6 times 5 might make 30, but 6 and 5 added together make 11, so that's going to be no good. What about 10 and 3? 10 3 is a 30, and 10 add 3 make 13. So, there you go. One of those numbers is 10, and the other number must be a 3. Now, how do we use these? Well, what we do is we say that this is identical to... I'd encourage you to use an identical sign rather than an equal sign here. Just write down the first term, 2x squared in this case, and then instead of the 13x, we take these two numbers, the 10 and the 3, but we put x's by them, 10x and 3x. Don't worry if you write these two the other way around, okay? You could have 3x here and 10x here. It won't actually make any difference to the final answer. Now, we've got 15 on the end, so we need to write that 15 on. So this is another way of writing this expression. Now what we do is we factorise the first pair here. We pull out a common factor, and in this case it's going to be 2x. So you put a bracket like this. So what would go inside here? Well, 2x times another x will give 2x squared, and 2x times a plus 5 would give the 10x. Now, once you've written this bracket here, just write it again over here. All right? Leave a little bit of a space. And you should find that in this example, you can pull out some number that when multiplied by the values in this bracket will give the 3x plus 15. And in this case, it's going to be plus 3. We factorise these two terms. But you should always end up with these two brackets being exactly the same. If you don't, then the chances are you've made a mistake. Now, once you've done that stage, We've got two terms that share a common factor, a common factor of x plus 5. So what you do is you put x plus 5 in the bracket in front of another bracket. And inside goes 2x, so that we have x plus 5 times 2x, which is this first term here, and then plus 3, so that we have x plus 5 times 3, which is what we have here. You don't have to put the x plus 5 bracket in the front of this bracket. You can have it behind if you wish. But I was, again, encourage you to write x plus 5 at the front. So you might like to try this example again. 
switch it round, put 3x here and a 10x there and see if you can achieve the same answer. OK, well let's move on to this next one where we have a plus and a minus. So if we go through the same process again, what have we got to do? Well we've got to find two numbers that multiply together then to give us minus 6 because that's going to be 3 times the minus 2. So we just put that down, 3 times minus 2 and hopefully you can see why I wrote those in red earlier on. Okay, 3 times minus 2 then is going to be minus 6. And then we want two numbers, those two same two numbers must add together to give us this middle value which in this case is plus 5. So we need to make plus 5. If that had been a minus 5, I'd have written minus 5 here. Okay. So, what are those numbers going to be? Well, if you think about it, it's got to be a 6 times a minus 1. One of those numbers has got to be a 6, and the other number's got to be minus 1. 6 times minus 1 is minus 6, and if you do 6 added to minus 1, you end up with 5. So with these pair of numbers, what we do is we say that this is identical then to just copy out the first term, 3x squared, and instead of 5x, we write 6x minus 1x, plus 6x minus 1x, and then the minus 2 on the end. Now I know you could write minus x, but I'm going to encourage you just to write minus 1x for examples like this. Now we put another identical sign underneath and we factorise the first pair. So we pull out 3x as the common factor and then inside would be x plus 2. You'll see that you would get 3x squared and 3x times 2 is plus 6x. Just move slightly to the right here, another bracket and just copy down what you've got here. In this case x plus 2. Now, what do you have to multiply x plus 2 by in order to get minus x minus 2? Well, it's got to be minus 1. It's a common factor to both these two terms. And hopefully you can see having that minus 1 in helps to get the value that we have to multiply that x plus 2 by. So, the final stage is just to write down x plus 2 because it's a common factor, it occurs in both terms in front of a bracket and then inside this bracket we just have 3x and then minus 1. Okay? Well I hope you've got the idea there. Now I've got two more examples for you where I've got two minuses and a minus and a plus. So you might like to try these. So here they are. We've got 5x squared minus 14x minus 3 and 2x squared minus 7x plus 6. Give them a go. OK, let's see how you got on. Right, well, for the first one then, we need to find two numbers that multiply together to give 5 times minus 3, minus 15, OK? And we're looking also for two numbers that add together to give the middle value here, minus 14. So we've got to think about what those two numbers are. So hopefully you got minus 15 and 1. Minus 15 times 1 is minus 15. And minus 15 add 1, minus 14. So what do we do with these values? Well... Remember, what we need to do is put them down as 5x squared minus 15x and then I'd encourage you to write plus 1x rather than just x. And then we've got the minus 3 on the end. So next, we need to find a common factor between this pair here and that's going to be 5x. So if we write the 5x down, open a bracket up, we've got an x inside there, 5x squared, minus 3. Leave a space, 
write down x minus 3 again. And what are we going to need to multiply x minus 3 by to get 1x minus 3? Well, it's got to be plus 1. And so you can see that we've got a common factor of x minus 3 now, and we should be able to complete that as x minus 3 times 5x plus 1. Now what about this next example? How do you get on with that? Well, again we think of two numbers that multiply together to give 2 times 6, which is 12. They must add together to give that middle value, minus 7. And what would those numbers be? We should have minus 4 and minus 3. Minus 4 times minus 3 is plus 12. And minus 4 added to minus 3 is minus 7. So, what we need to do now is just put that in on this next line. 2x squared, put in our values, minus 4x, minus 3x making the minus 7x, and then the plus 6 on the end. Then we need to just factorise each pair, and if we do that, again we're going to have 2x here as a common factor, x minus 2. Go to the right here, write in another x minus 2, and what must go outside here? Well, it's got to be minus 3. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x, and minus 3 times minus 2 is plus 6. So we should be able to finish that off. x minus 2 is the common factor, and you can put it in front of 2x minus 3. Alright, so I hope that's given you an idea, and uh, that means that you can now factorise quadratic expressions or trinomials that look like this. Okay, well thanks for listening and I hope that's been of some use to you.